Welcome back to Pound for Pound ATL. What's up, y'all? Hey, you already know what it is. It is Pound for Pound ATL. And, of course, I am Toby D. Look, man, I'm just going to tell y'all right now and start it off just like this, man. We would like to thank you all, JR and myself, for the continued support you have shown us and all the love you have shown us uh, in this unfortunate COVID-19 era that we are in right now. We have been very thankful to be hanging out with you guys via video and you guys have been sharing liking and commenting on all the videos we put out you have helped us go with 21 straight videos of over a thousand plus views guys that has never happened before and we thank you guys so much for that we ask that you continue to share like uh, comment on the content and click the notification bell just so you can make sure that you get all the videos that we put out and you will be alerted by that uh, when we put videos out. And subscribe if you haven't already done so and tell everybody you know this Falcons fans about Pound for Pound ATL. And hey man, let's continue to do this thing. We are literally 300 or less away from 3,000 subscribers. And you know what I mean? A giveaway is on the horizon once we reach 3,000. Um, subscribers man jr and i are still talking about how we're going to do that but man once that's all settled somebody's going to get s something special from me and jr when this is all said and done and we hit that 3000 so hey man continue to doing what you've been doing to help us do it we've had some amazing numbers but man let's let that go right now and i want to get to talking about something that i thought that i was going to see in 2019 from the Atlanta Falcons. And that is the Falcons using big nickel defense. Um, for many of you Falcons fans and football fans, you already, a lot of you are so smart and intelligent about the game, even smarter than myself. I'm still learning as we speak. Um, you already know that it entails three safeties on the field. We already run a lot of nickel a lot of teams on defense anyway. Um, but now you're adding an extra safety on the field, uh, especially for the Atlanta Falcons. And the reason why I'm bringing this up because I just knew that we were going to be able to see Ricardo Allen coming back off the Achilles injury, um, Keanu O'Neal coming off the torn ACL, and DeMonte Casey who played safety in 2018 for the Falcons. Um, with the loss of both Ricardo Allen and Keanu Neal, we thought we were going to see them on the field at the same time last season. Now, of course, uh, we got a bomb that hit us when we found out that DeMonte Casey was actually going to be tried out at Nickelback instead of a safety in 2019. Well, we see how that worked out. It didn't work out well for the Atlanta Falcons as they had planned. But they did, before that, went and signed J.J. Wilcox. And I was definitely interested to see what him, Ricardo Allen, and Keanu Neal was going to look like on the field at the same time together when Dan Quinn took over the defense initially and threw out the idea of playing more big nickel defense. Now, I wonder if that's going to be something that the Falcons entertain and revisit again. Um, last year, they didn't have... Uh, quite the fortune that they would have liked to have. J.J. Wilcox goes down and in, in practice in camp with a torn ACL. Uh, and then, not too long after that, three games into the season, Keanu Neal goes down um, with a torn Achilles. And then you go out and you actually trade Duke Riley for Jonathan Cyprin to come over here to the Atlanta Falcons. Um, two bottom round picks, of course to get Jonathan Cyprin, and he goes down, doesn't even get a chance to get his feet wet with the Atlanta Falcons. Played in the Falcons scheme, of course, before when he was uh, over there with Gus Bradley, with the Jacksonville Jaguars previously in his career, but didn't get a chance to shine in the Atlanta Falcons defense. Hopefully this year is different because I really would like to see, and I'm sure you guys would too, now that we know that Dan Quinn has officially made it official 
that DeMonte KZ is going to be a safety moving forward. Now that we know that, we hopefully will get the chance to see a healthy Keanu Neal coming back off a torn Achilles injury and Ricardo Allen and DeMonte Casey on the field at the same time. Why is this something that I would be excited to see? Well, ladies and gentlemen, as you very well know, we're going to be playing against some serious and talented tight ends uh, in the 2020 season. And as you also very well may know or may not know, um, Tom Brady, yes, is over there with the Tampa Bay Bucks and has recruited Rob Gronkowski over to an already potent tight end group with Cameron Bray and O.J. Howard. Now, I couldn't understand the situation about O.J. Howard. I was hearing from a lot of Bucks fans and, and media saying that O.J. Howard was someone that wasn't really that well liked by the staff, uh, Bruce Arians and Byron Leftwich because he didn't really fit within the offense. And then I'm looking at his stats. He had more yards than Cameron Brake and any other tight end on that squad last season, over 400-plus yards. Now, his touchdowns were down. He only had one touchdown uh, compared to the five touchdowns he had while Dirk Cutter was there the year previous to that uh, in 2018 with Ben Steele, who is now the Atlanta Falcons, new tight ends coach who is replacing Mike Malarkey. But guys, we're going to see some heavy tight end artillery in 2020. And I believe the way, the best way to combat that is having big nickel on the field with Ricardo Allen, DeMonte Casey, and Keanu Neal on the field at the same time. Now, could you try and rely on all your linebackers Yes, like Foyer or Lua Khan, um, the new guy we got, Michael Walker, to add into that. Um, Edmund Robinson, whom we signed from the XFL. Deion Jones, not to be excluded there because he is a major part. Yes, you probably could, but I wouldn't go with it because you don't have a Deion Jones playing the other two spots on the field at the same time with the speed that he brings to the game to be able to cover the tight ends that you are going to see. And this is why I'm in favor of big nickel on the field of the Atlanta Falcons. I'm going to be showing some clips, man, of Ricardo Allen, Devontae Casey, and Keanu Neal, starting all the way back from the 2015 season when Ricardo Allen took over as a safety, um, moved from cornerback to safety. Man, starting with Ricardo Allen, don't be fooled by this guy's size. Now, I know a lot of us have been on Ricardo Allen because we didn't feel like, at least myself, I'm not going to speak for y'all, that he was really the prototypical type to be able to play in a single high safety look because he didn't really possess the range that I would like of an Earl Thomas to be able to cover the whole back end of the field. Well, we saw that the Atlanta Falcons moved him more to the strong safety position when Keon O'Neal went down, and he actually did a pretty good, decent job at that position, playing down around the box. Now, what would be interesting to me is where he's going to be this season when Keon O'Neal comes back, because a lot of us have been wondering, what are the Falcons going to do with Keon O'Neal? Well, if you play a lot of big nickel on the field to help come back those 12 tight end sets that we are looking to see, you're going to see Keanu Neal on the field a lot playing that hybrid safety role, something that they had Kamal Ishmael in, which is the reason why I feel like Kamal Ishmael is not here, so that Keanu Neal can slide into that role of uh, Kamal Ishmael and be able to play that safety LB hybrid role that Kamal Ishmael played. Man, if you got these three guys on the field with the ball instincts that both um, DeMonte Casey and Ricardo Allen possess, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but between those two guys in their career with the Atlanta Falcons, do you know they have 19 interceptions amongst each other? Dog, that is a lot of interceptions to me in the last couple of years, What shows you the instincts that these guys have. And I think, I'm just going to throw this out there, that we may see a lot more cover two 
two safeties instead of one safety um, up high for the Atlanta Falcons because I believe that this is where these guys will be able to excel the most, covering only half the field and not having to worry about focusing on covering the whole field by themselves. Now, there are some disadvantages of that because if your instincts are not right, you are going to allow tight ends to bust it down the seam and break your coverage and get some touchdowns or big yardage on you. And that is the one thing I'm hoping not to see a lot of. I know we're going to see some of it. Um, when you've got guys like Rob uh, Gronkowski now that is with the Tampa Bay Bucks, O.J. Howard and Cameron Bray over there, uh, we're going to see some busted coverages, but I hope that it stays at a minimum and does not look like what Mike Smith's cover two defense used to look like with Thomas Day Koo and William Moore. Uh, back in the day when we were watching those guys and Drew Brees straight killing us down the scene with guys like Jimmy Graham. Um, we had no answer for. But guys, we are going to be facing some serious tight ends. You just heard me name the three over there with the Tampa Bay Bucks. Um, they use 25% personnel grouping of multiple tight ends. It's no wonder that Tom Brady is very itching to be over there and recruited Rob Gronkowski because I believe, and tight ends are your quarterback's best friend, that they are going to be looking to utilize a lot of 12 personnel on the field, one running back and two tight end sets. And I believe that the Atlanta Falcons have to have that big nickel on the field to be able to handle such attack coming from them. And they won't be the only ones. Look at what the New Orleans Saints did. They went and jumped up in the third round and drafted a guy that the Atlanta Falcons were attached to in the Senior Bowl and Adam Troutman uh, from Dakota University, a small-time school where he looked like a man amongst boys. And we don't know if that's going to translate into the NFL, but you got a 6'6", 250 tight end coming in here, pass-catching, had almost 1,000 yards and 14 receiving touchdowns. And you're hoping that if some of that can translate into the NFL along with guys like the experience of a Jared Cook um, and Josh Hill, who has been known to hurt the Atlanta Falcons tight end over there, they got three capable tight ends over there right now with the New Orleans Saints that can hurt the Atlanta Falcons. And I feel like this season – Big nickel is going to be more prevalent than ever. And I'm showing some clips here where you see Ricardo Allen, man, when he's not intercepting the ball, don't be fooled, like I say, by his size. He can hit and pop you. Uh, we see him right here in this clip. He pops the mess out of Zach Ertz when they came here in 2015. I mean, I'm sure Zach Ertz was not expecting that out of a 5'9", 180-pound guy, but he loves to pop you, and we're going to need Keanu Neal, him, and Demonte Casey to help establish some of that intimidation. Even if that dude does not catch the ball, you see Ricardo Allen still lighting him up, or it's either Keanu Neal lighting him up. In one clip, man, when Kobe Fleener was there with the New Orleans Saints, Kobe was scared because he knew that Keanu Neal was possibly lurking around him, and you can see how nervous he was to catch the football to the point that where he didn't even catch it. And I do believe that Keanu Neal still has that intimidation factor. We saw that last year when he came back, running backs dipping out of the way because they know that he's lurking around. We saw tight ends doing the same thing, dipping out of the way before they can even take a hit from Keanu Neal and receivers alike doing the same thing. Thing. But these guys, man, you got two ball hawks on the back end. If they're in this cover two look, man, it is two clips back to back that I'm going to show with Ricardo Allen in 2019 getting an interception up there in, in Carolina on the Carolina Panthers. And guess what they're in? A cover two shell. And he excels being right there when the ball is being uh, more of an errant throw by the quarterback. I can't remember his name, and I'm not really worried about it. I know he's over there in Washington Redskins. But the same thing, cover two, once again, you see DeMonte Casey shine and be right there where the ball is. 
in order to intercept it. Both these guys had interceptions in that game together. And that's what I'm excited to see. We know the Falcons have added more because they wanted to make sure this year. I'm believing they're going to show some more big nickel looks because they went heavy building the depth on that safety side. If you watched any other clips with C.J. Revis, now, I don't know much about C.J. Revis, but I can tell you this much. Dude looks like he's something serious right now with his workouts and the things that he's doing, working on his technique. He really wants to make this team for the Atlanta Falcons as one of these safeties. You already know about Chris Cooper. One guy that I'm keeping my eye on, though, is an undrafted safety who's about 6'4", 220 pounds, more like a Cam Chancellor type of guy, only been playing the safety position for two years, out of Ball State, um, Will Ray Wilborn. Be on the lookout for that guy. I don't think he has a number yet for the Atlanta Falcons, you know, with all this COVID-19 stuff going on. But once he gets the number, man, be on the lookout for this guy. I will probably tweet it out um, what this dude's number is. Or when it finally he finally gets one assigned to him, you can go on the roster and check out what his number is. But I will be keeping an eye out for this guy, Ray Wilborn. But, man, we got some safeties um, that we can really rotate and play this big nickel to help combat some of these tight end sets that we are going to see this season with the New Orleans Saints and with the Tampa Bay Bucks. Now, Carolina, I'm not too worried about because Joe Brady is someone that loves his three wide receiver sets. Um, similarly to what Dirk Cutter likes to do, but he really – really leans on three wide receiver sets and not too much of a focus. And you can look at their rosters. They don't really have a tight end because Greg Olson, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute, is now with the Seattle Seahawks. Now the Seattle Seahawks have Greg Olson, um, Will Disley, and Jacob Hollister. Those, those three guys right there can be very dangerous for the Atlanta Falcons week one. And I'm hoping to see more big nickel looks and a healthy Keanu Neal coming back for the Atlanta Falcons, man, to help be able to combat some of that. Let that man work his way underneath and hit anything moving. And while you got your two high safeties up there with Keanu, with um, DeMonte Casey and Ricardo Allen, man, you to me, you got something going. And not to mention, when JR tweeted that out, man, you got Isaiah Oliver, whom we are hoping to improve 6'1", 200 pounds, and you just added A.J. Terrell from the Clemson Tigers, 6'1", almost 200 pounds himself, and you add that with those three safeties, man, you got, to me, a nice, formidable, physical, intimidating group to be able to lay the wood on guys, and you know Joe Witt and Raheem Morris is going to get the dog out of these guys to be able to hunt and Ball hawk that ball. And you know we already added Jalen. <clears throat> Excuse me. We already added Jalen Hawkins. We drafted him in the fourth round. And I'm interested to see what he can do at the next level of the NFL. Right now he's listed as a strong safety. Um, but in that cover two set, man, you have versatile safeties that can play free and strong. So it won't really matter what side they will be able to be able to play on because the versatility there within that cover scheme. But we shall see. I don't know if that's going to be one of our predominant cover schemes. I do know that is something that Raheem Morris is comfortable with, as well as Joe Witt Jr. You go back and look at some of his days when he was with the Packers. They played a lot of cover two, um, Tampa two scheme over there with the Green Bay Packers, the one year they had 31 interceptions in 2011. And I'm hoping we can do like what Joe Witt says, be able to bring that intensity over here and take that ball away and give it to our high-powered offense. Hey, other than that, man, you guys comment. Let me know if you believe the Falcons are going to revisit the big nickel um, package this season under Raheem Morris and Joe Witt Jr., or you think they're going to do something else and rely more heavily on the linebackers to do a lot of the work with Foyer uh, and Deion Jones. Just let me know what y'all think. Other than that, man, listen, you can follow me at TobyD1991 on Twitter. Also, you can follow JR at Grim 
1128. That's G R I M M 1128. Other than that, hey, it's pound for pound ATL. I'm Toby D. Peace. I'm out.